there's a difference between motivation and discipline. And motivation yeah. is like that initial feelings of like driving five hours to get some pussy. Discipline is like, I can't afford to drive five hours to get some pussy. So how do I, you know what I mean? So like, right. you know, there's this discipline that has to also step up because the fact is, is like, you know, G can't wake up every morning for the next, like every, every fucking day of his life and be as love drunk about ZF. There's going to be days where ZF is not going to be fucking fun and it's going to kick him in the balls and be like, God damn these mother, you know, but the, I think the discipline, the things that you put in to remind yourself, like why we're here, right? what's exactly. all, like all of that shit yeah. has to fucking come to play. Yeah, exactly, man. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Zero Bunker. Uh, G and CJ here, and we're ready for another kick-ass podcast. Uh, if you guys are new here, we want to welcome you. Uh, this is basically an opportunity where you can get to know, uh, I guess, a little bit more insight of what goes on within ZF, Zero Foxtrot. Uh, what's going on, G, man? How are you, dude? Good, man. Good. Uh, just... Long fucking weekend, man. Fourth of July was a blast. Um, I, I heard literally a blast. Can yeah. You tell us yeah. Little, can you so, <laughs> give me some insight on what happened? Well, just to keep it short, man. So a good buddy of mine, um, he's actually one of my partners at ZF. He invited us to uh, to go to his house to celebrate, man. And um, went out there. There was a bunch of army guys too. So it was a, it was a good time, man. So the time came where we had to go out there and blow some shit up right of course so obviously there's like a bunch of kids there too and uh you know they're doing little pop crackers or whatever the fuck they were throwing and shit sparklers and fountains yeah. and the little <laughs> thing yeah the things they throw in to scare the shit out of people yeah pretty much man so um so basically like it started escalating to like the big boys play right so he hands me this fucking thing and it's like uh, it looked like a i don't know it looked like a massive shell right so the part that I didn't get, me being a Marine, is it's, you know, I need like very dumbed down, like, you <laughs> the, know, <laughs> instructions. Was, yeah, there was no manual that yeah, went with this. Yeah, there was no this. manual, there was no crayons, nothing, right? So basically he's like, hey, go out there, put it in the tube and light it up. See, the whole tube part completely went blank. Now, if you would have said, hey, set this up like a mortar system, then I would have said, okay, round tube, right? But that didn't happen. So I literally set the motherfucker on the ground. <laughs> And I light that thing up, dude. So instead of blowing up in whatever altitude it's supposed to blow up in, it just blew up at ground level. So like that shit went all over, <laughs> all the burn some lady in the leg, dude. And like kids scattered. It kids was kids were chaos. scattering, dude. But you know what? That's when the fun started, though. Fuck yeah. So man. Uh, so it was cool, man. Then we we're like shooting each other off with them Roman candles, man. I got pegged pretty hard, dude. And uh, so it, it was good, you know, celebrate freedom and uh, like we should be doing every day. But uh, so, dude, I was I was super sick, decided, you know, I'm going to stay inside. And it was like, I got it. I got to like nurse myself back to hell. So I decided to, of course, start drinking. And uh, right way of doing it. Right. So I'm about like a bottle of wine in sick like, by myself, like just me and my cat. And I start hearing fireworks. And I'm thinking, like, I, I have a couple other YouTube channels that I do. One of them is just a personal, like, a daily vlog. And I was like, man, I want to get some shots of, like, some fireworks going off. So I brought the drone outside. Wait, wait. So you did not put your sign out there that said, please be courteous of a PTSD veteran? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. I did, no. It, and so I'm, here's this drunken CJ outside bringing his drone up there. And I get it up in the air. And immediately it drifts into a tree right next to it. It, it crashes and pro it broke the gimbal on the fucking drone. Now I gotta oh, fix the drone. Damn, dude. Yeah, that was it. Was not my my finest hour, that's for sure. Hey, shit, man. You know, but uh, it's. I mean, hey, man. Hope, hope hopefully all you guys had celebrated Fourth of July, man. Um, you know, with a blast. And and what's funny, I, I will insight this, dude. So the guy, a uh, good buddy of mine, he's also like half Arabic and shit. Mm -hmm. So he's like. I'm supposed to be blowing up the fucking neighborhood, not you. God right? damn. <laughs> so Jesus. Like, <laughs> uh, so, G, I want, really quick, man. So yeah. I wanted to just kind of touch on something. Now, you sent out some recent insights, man. It got some feedback from uh, some of our 
podcast consumers and just ZF customers about like what's going on. And, and mm -hmm. some of the feedback you had gotten was regarding just kind of like contributing a little bit more to like some of the history stuff. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so one thing we want to, you know, so history is like a massive thing that we, you know, that obviously ZF is based upon. And, uh, you know, but we also like to tie in all kinds of stuff. Now, you know, we, we said this numerous times, we kind of like free you know, we just kind of free ball it and just go with it, right? Uh, sometimes sure. we don't have a plan. But I we, mean, no no nut net, none of it, okay? No, just, no, yeah. yeah, no, just silkies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we do, you know, we can kind of get sidetracked, you know, because we just sit, be sitting here and talking for hours about all kinds of subjects. And uh, um, so, but we do notice that sometimes we veer off into one thing or the other, and it seems like you guys want more in-depth details, which we're, we have no problem giving you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we try to find a good, healthy balance between, you know, we, we always want you guys to walk out with something good out of this. So uh, so basically what we're eventually going to be doing, we're, we're going to be focusing a lot more on history. We're probably going to you know, segment an entire episodes uh, on top of what we're doing, specifically dedicated to history, so you guys can get the full depth about what we talk about. Yeah, that's that's what I, I just wanted to kind of bring that up because I wanted you guys to know out there uh, that, you know, obviously we take uh, feedback very seriously and, uh, and maturely and we want to uh, grow from that. And so what we're basically, and it started the conversation really today about is uh, just, just potentially doing a whole series that's going to be dedicated to that so that you guys that are looking for that kind of yeah. thing. Because I mean, you know, it's hard to, it's it's hard to please everybody. I mean, we do have, there's a percentage of the audience that enjoys some of the, the conversation about modern day stuff or like the lifestyle banner and that kind of thing. And so, you and know, we've had a lot of great feedback. I mean, sure. it's helped a lot of people, which we're glad and we're always going to pump that kind of stuff. But, you know, here's the other thing too, you know, we, we don't sit on this high horse, you know, we, we enjoy the feedback, good or bad, because we always want to be better. You know, we always want to give you guys what, you know, you, you guys are, taking an hour away from your time to listen to us and we need to make it worthwhile. So, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, and so to kind of privy into this episode, we're actually, we're not, we're not going to be getting into history, uh, yeah, but not this one, because there's something yeah. interesting that actually it's a question has been popping up. Um, not just in the last couple of months, but honestly in the last couple of years between, you know, within my own realm and then CJ's. Um, and, and, and I think it's something that a lot of you guys can walk out of this with a lot of good uh, insight and information on. And, you know, if we notice the last, what, five, six, seven, you know, 10 years, a lot of veterans have been doing one thing, man, starting their own shit. Yeah, it's well, I think there's a couple things going on, man, is like, number one, uh, veterans in particular, yes, they uh, we're, we're basically going to talk about starting a business and or, or kind of some some thought process around starting a venture, I guess. Or, you know, I don't know if we want to say business venture, whatever. More like following your passion, right? Yeah, sure. Start following your passion. And I think veterans definitely there, there's a strong correlation between being a veteran, going through some of these experiences, having that that background and tying into uh, entrepreneurship or just just different like personal ventures in that department. Uh, with that being said, we also have to understand that the way that just times are changing in general, I mean, we're kind of in an age where it, it's just different. And I think that there are more and more people taking opportunities that are there that didn't used to be there uh, yeah. due to social media and, and different outlets and stuff that we have. So yeah, absolutely. So um, so basically, it's like, you know, we always get this quint quintessential question is like, Man, how do, how do you start a business? Well, first off, that's, you know, one thing that I want to break down is uh, nobody, you know, the, the real people who start successful businesses at the end, that's not how they start, right? Mm -hmm. They don't start with, with saying, okay, I'm going to throw in X amount of money and I'm going to be, and I'm not saying that that's the wrong way of doing it. What I'm saying is, is that I, every, every successful company or business or entity has started with passion, bottom line, like Apple, UPS, like all the biggest conglomerates, they all started with passion. You know what I mean? They all started with like, this is what I, this is what I'm interested. In, this is what I want to do. This is what my role in life is. And we've also seen people who had, you know, a career path and then kind of like they had this moment of like, oh shit, like this is my calling. Right. And they focused on that. And uh, business is not about throwing money or investing or things like that. At least in my opinion, my opinion is business it's about enjoying what your passion is and you know 
change your life, somebody else's life and make money on top of it. So, yeah, I think there's a tier system. I think that sometimes we confuse, like we look at businesses where they are today and you might look at say like, uh, I don't know, like, like a Ford or like you said, Apple or, or somewhere where they are the company they are now, but we forget, you know, Henry Ford and right. how, where that came from. We forget like Steve Jobs and Wozniak in a freaking garage somewhere. Like yeah. we forget, like, and you know, I, I get the emotion around it because I think sometimes also like businesses can lose that initial passion or they, they start to, you know, veer off in a different direction. I mean, you know, you, you've got Mark Zuckerberg, uh, that that's like basically almost like giving shit away, like, like doing code and shit. Cause he has this interest in it. And now it's the Facebook that we think now, and there's a lot of opinions swirling around it. Right. Like, cause mm -hmm. we think of it as this, like, Oh, it's this huge conglomerate, like giant, like controlling the world. And maybe you're, you're not wrong, but at the end of the day, like when you ask the question, how do you start a business? It, it's funny to think that that's kind of the wrong question because yes. it's like, well, what the fuck are you excited about? Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. Um, you know, if you have intentions to the questions you should be asking is right. What is it that I enjoy? Right. Take away money, take away anything else. If you had all the money in the world already and there was one thing that you could do, you know, all your bills were paid, all that stuff was taken care of. Right. But there was one thing that you would love to dedicate your time to do. What would that be? Start Alex's that. mom. Yeah. <laughs> she's, oh, she's yeah. always in the middle, man. <laughs> but think about that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if you had everything else already, all the necessities, well, where, what, how would you spend your time doing what exactly? Right. Yeah. Uh, and start with that because you know what, just because there's always going to be a niche, there's always going to be a market, there's always going to be a necessity about what you do, right? Because a lot of things that, you know, at least that I've noticed is that, um, you know, I'm not like the numbers guy. I'm not, I just go purely off passion. I go purely off instinct. I go purely off of like, you know, but what I'm doing that I've started noticing is that, you know, uh, I couldn't quantify the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So having, um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this, man, that, Sometimes you may be doing things that you have you have no idea. Like you're not realize that you're actually doing them. Well, like if you read a business book, you may be doing those the same exact things. You just never knew you were so doing here, you were doing them. Here's the best way I could put this, man. It's like what led me into bed with Alex's mom to start with was just pure lust energy. Yeah. But then as I was going, I started realizing that I was hitting that certain spot and I didn't even know it. I was just excited about it, man. And I, you know, I, I ran across that spot. Yeah. That, that, this is like the grunt version essentially, right? <laughs> right. So, but, but yeah, no, but seriously, I mean, think about that, right? I mean, it could be the stupidest thing. I, I never forgot, you know, like if you're going to be, oh, you know, here's the other thing to be the best at being you, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to go out there and sell fucking candles and shit then be the best fucking candle maker out there right uh i think there's an opportunity for anything i think there's an opportunity for everybody it's all about are you gonna take that it's all about you know are you gonna dedicate the time to put in to create and 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 nourish your passion mm -hmm. you know yeah and and so uh kind of dig into this a little bit um G and I both have experience being business owners and both of us also uh, kind of come are cut from the same cloth or the side of business anyway, where, you know, for me, I, I built a business around uh, something I was excited about and an idea and that kind of grew into something else and more structure. And, and you, you were kind of the driving force with that too uh, on your business. Yes. Um, and then along the way came in these structures and things like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing, like, I know you're saying like, you know, this is how I started my business. Right. But when we were doing it, we had no idea that we were starting a business. Right. Right. That's, that's kind of the caveat. People think that people are probably going to expect that we're going to give them like a step one through A to Z, how to start. There isn't one. Mm -hmm. There really isn't because everybody is going to, there's no like universal plan how to start one. Right. Yeah shit just starts evolving. Like ZF, it, it literally started for anything but money or anything but, you know, cr being a brand, anything but, you know, it was more- Your audience you is know, the one that encouraged you to yes, monetize absolutely, it. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So basically, you know, I was just sharing, you know, my passion about history and being creative and, and all the other good stuff. Uh, that was my contribution, right? That was my outlet. 
And then when people are like, dude, you should make that, or hey, dude, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, then I'm like, you know what? If they're enjoying it, then I'll make it, right? And I took out a hundred bucks that are making stickers and shit like that, and it kind of evolved from there. Um, but you know, here's the other thing too. And a lot of people are gonna ask, like, dude, I don't have time to make a business. I got kids, I got a, you know, I got a full time job and all of that. Well, that's where the caveat comes in, because I used to work eight hours out of the day and I still made time. So it kind of like goes into if you really want to start something, you got to put the time into it. There's going to be sacrifices. There's going to be a lot of things that you got to go through with it. You're going to go through a lot of hardships. You're going to lose a lot of people along the way. You know, you're going to learn a lot of hard lessons, but are you willing to go through that? You well, know, and that's what I was going to ask you. So like, I think there's two types of individuals. Well, okay, let me, let's speak to this. Let's, let's carve this piece out. In today's world, we have, you know, call it millennials or whatever generation who gives a shit, but like you have a lot of people that I think they care about morals more than they do necessarily like financial gain. And, sure. and they, you know, so, so the meaning behind things is important to them. And I can appreciate that, but there's a lot of people that talk about passion. They say like, man, I'm really passionate about this stuff, but, but they, they lack the, uh, the work ethic to actually put their, their nose to the grind and chase that passion. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy to say, man, I want to do that. But like doing that is a whole nother concept, right? right? Yeah, they get the reality check that are like, oh, I want to do this, but then I look at reality. I'm like, fuck, I gotta, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and I gotta like take care of this, and I gotta do responsibilities. And next thing you know, it just become that becomes a dream, it doesn't mm -hmm. become a reality, right? And that, it's breaking that barrier. Well, it reminds me of people that talk about like, you know people get in conversation about all kinds of ideas, right? But like there's rare people that actually act on ideas and that that's, you mm -hmm. have to separate those. You know, sometimes, and that's something that annoys the crap out of me is sometimes you get in these like round table discussions and you, weeks and weeks and weeks later, like we're talking about shit, but we're never doing shit. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it's like, man, some somebody's gotta have like that, just like, here we go, like step one, let's just start doing. Um, so, so I think that there is where the rubber meets the road a combination of like, okay, you're excited about something, now fucking do something about it. You right, know what I mean? absolutely, man. I think there's, again, there's no excuses to not follow your dreams and not follow your, you know, your gut into it. You know what I mean? Um, there are people that are completely content about working, you know, their eight to five job. Great, that's awesome. Um, but what I can say, though, is that, you know, I, here's one thing, right? There, there's another thing that pops into my head as, I, as I'm thinking about this is like people always say, you know, oh man, you're your own boss. You do your own hours. I'll tell you what, man. I have never worked so hard in my fucking life for, for anybody. You're always going to yeah. work harder for yourself. Always, always, right? I mean, I'm still working fucking 18 hour days. I'm still the last guy that leaves. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people see, you know, the, 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 the growth and they see the financials and whatever, right? But they don't get to see the real insides you know like when you're like 11 30 at night fucking coming up with shit you know what i mean or yeah that's a sacrifice it becomes it does become a lifestyle uh and i think a lot of people fall through the crass because they don't want to go through it all the way do you think that's where being a veteran helped you was is there something you learned as far as like work ethic or grit or something i, that maybe I would say that the being a you know, being in the infantry is one thing that taught me is to suck it the fuck up. You know what I mean? That no matter, you know, and, and again, I know, and we talked about this before, but it always felt like no matter Sit how hard food. it is, yeah, no matter how hard it is, no matter how bad I'm having it, I just got to keep going. No matter, you know, the world can come down on me, I'm still going to keep going. I have a, a mission oriented, right? Uh, and I was, you know, and, and I was willing to let everything else burn on my side just to get to that goal. But now it's like, as it, it, you know, ZF grew, thanks to, you know, to all the supporters. Uh, but one thing that I will say is that it also, it's growing because I'm sticking to the morals. I'm sticking to the principles. I'm sticking to, I never forgot where I came from and how it was to eat with no plates. You know what I mean? How it was to, you know, take care of, you know, ensuring quality and making sure that every customer is taken care of, you know, um, it's just little things like that. And now I'm just doing it on a, on a bigger scale. And as you're growing, you kind of, you're kind of like breaking away from, um, you know, the mom and pop shop into the whole company conglomerate shit. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and to me, that's a hard pill to swallow because I don't believe in, into that. I believe that you can still maintain the proper principles, right? Yeah. Uh, you gotta, you know, the lessons that I learned, man, take care of your supporters, you know, make sure you provide quality, whatever you're doing, take your time in doing stuff, do it with passion and heart. And I'm telling you, 
I guarantee you, if money's what you're looking for, eventually you're going to make it. It's going to, like you said, mm -hmm. passion turns into money, right? If yeah. that's what you're looking for. So Yeah, I think you can truly, in, in today's world, monetize just about anything, guys. Um, to what extent? I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. And that's, you know, I, I also think what's interesting is when you talk about money, there's a lot of people out there that, like, look up to the, uh, the, the I don't know, was the Tony Robbins or the fucking, like, the, all these business, like, motivational guys. And they have this, this thought in their head, like, they're sitting in a position of, like, without any business thinking... I want to create this million dollar business or millions of dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. But some of you just forget, man, like just like creating something that you're excited about and right. making like a six figure income, fucking paying yourself goddamn $80,000 a year. That's amazing. Like to create, and I know this, you know, that may sound like, and I'm not saying don't shoot for as much as whatever, but it's like, if you're able to take like something that's yours, that you're excited about, that you created, that put an $80,000 a year freaking income in your pocket, that's fucking amazing. You should be fucking proud of that. Yeah. Like that, that's awesome. And and that should be, I'm not saying that should be enough for you. I mean, like always shoot for the stars. But what I'm saying is, is like, like don't forget that the bigger picture is the fact that you created something that's yes. providing for you now. You yeah, know? absolutely, man. It was kind of like what you do with the FTA gym and what I'm doing with ZF. Like, you know, the, the, the pleasure that I take out of it is that, I can think of something and then seeing it, you know, the result that I'm touching it in my hand, I'm like, dude, it went from my mind into I'm actually holding it. You know what I mean? I just mm -hmm. realized something. But then all I'm doing is sharing it with everybody else, right? And they and they say that's business. But, um, you know, you, you cannot be afraid to take risks. That's the other biggest thing too. You know what I mean? Like you're never going to be 100% certain on the move. You got to take, how do you, how do you quantify that? Like, how do you, how do you follow, walk across that bridge? Follow your gut, follow your gut, man. But there's what no, about fear? What about it? Well, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who say like, well, it's easier to set, you know, it's easy to say that, like follow my gut and like this is something, I, but I'm scared of falling. How do you justify that? You know what I mean? I say that, uh, you're never going to know unless you take that leap. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you got to, you know, you don't let fear control you in a way. I, you know, I, I, I say do your research, make educated guesses, but there's always going to be that small percentage that, you you know, you, you're not going to be able to quantify. You're going to have yeah. to just take a risk. You're going to have to say, you know what, I'm going to do this. It's like, you know, like fucking um, like Eisenhower, right? When, when, you know, they were preparing for the D-Day landings. At the end of the day, everything was set, knowing there was a lot of risks, and he had to make a gut call, and he said, you know, and this guy had the entire faith of the world in his shoulders because of the D-Day landings didn't, didn't uh, go through. You know, God knows, I mean, the entire Allied invasion would have been wiped out. So he said, let's go. That's the gamble that he took, right? So he did as much math as possible. He calculated, they did all these plans, they did all this shit, but at the end of the day, that small percentage was still, there was still that risk. And sometimes you, you just got to go with it, man. Uh, bottom line. Yeah. You know? I think, I think what helps me to get over fear sometimes is I think people are worried about consequences, which is, is an understandable thing. I, guys, the consequences are a real thing. However, I think what helps me is realizing that I, I only have a certain number of days on this earth. You know what I sure. mean? And it's like, it's, I guess that that puts into perspective how much scarier uh, not doing something with the time I have is versus not, you know, vers versus, well, what if it fails? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what's crazy is when you actually hear some of the most successful people out there and you actually hear how many failures led up to their final success. Absolutely. I mean, it was, I think Michael Jordan had a famous quote. Um, actually, I'm going to pull it up, man, if you feel a bad because this is a great quote from Michael Jordan um, but uh, he talks about uh, holy shit quotes. you can type wow. I know man it's, it's and, and, impressive and, right? and, wow and spell nice <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to, let's go to here we go uh, da, 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 da. this has got to be a good one come on man where is it at was like the one Arnold said, right? You cannot climb the ladder of success with your hands Says, in your pocket, right? I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted with a game winning shot and I missed. I've failed over and over again in my life, and that's exactly why I succeed. Yeah, absolutely. So, you gotta, you, get, you have to embrace the fact that you are going to fail. Absolutely. Yeah. You are going to fail. But then what you do with that failure, 
Right. How are you going to learn from it? Yeah. You know, you can fail a million times, man. And then all it takes is for you to take it right, you know, to make it right once and it'll all be worth it. Well, and, and I think that you also can, you know, and again, we've talked about perspective a fuckload of times on here. But the fact is, when, every, when you take a shot and you miss, you got a choice to be like upset about that or like let that consequence or whatever, like, like absorb you. Or you can look at that and say like, I learned something here that's going to make me better on my next shot. You know, yeah. it, it's every failure is an opportunity. It's not, uh, you know, like, oh, I, I got to quit. You know, it's like, no, yeah, I think the worst, the worst thing that people can do, you know, when starting a business or just literally anything in life is look back and say like, fuck, you know what? I should have done that. You, you can never go back in time. The only thing you can do is change the present and the future. You Absolutely. Know? Dude, I was so close to just not asking Alex's mom about anal. And thank God I <laughs> took that shot. You know, I would have never. Was it worth it? It was worth it. Totally God, worth it, guys. See, see, totally worth it. You know, it. you don't have to sit there and think about AIDS and shit, man. It's just, <laughs> just, you know. But but on the seriousness, you know, being serious about it, though, it's, uh, um, you know, they're like, well, I don't have. They're like, okay, I have the passion. This is exactly what I want to do. What do I start, right? Well, do your, you know, do your research as in like, Look at, a, look at who's bigger than you, right? Take an yeah. example. Take a, you know, look at who's doing the same thing in your field, for example, I, and look, see what they're doing. Well, this, look. And not to copy them, but to be inspired, you know, find an inspiration. I would, I would tell you guys right now, every, like, everybody confuses this idea of like, oh man, I'm passionate, but are you fucking passionate? Because like, here's the thing. When people ask me, well, how the fuck did you do that? I'm like, well, it started with me being obsessed with it. I'm not like, not just passionate. Like mm -hmm. I am fucking drunk, obsessed with it. Like it has overwhelmed my body like drugs. And so yeah. much that that organically led to whenever I would fucking like take, if I had five minutes to myself, I was on the internet researching somebody that knew how to do something yes. that I didn't fucking know how to do that was going to make this thing a reality. And like, that's the work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like you absolutely, said. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Do do your research. Like, you're right. Obsess about what you love. You know what I mean? Get into it. Get in. Know everything about it. Be a fucking the best expert you can be on it. Right. And again, I'm not here. We're not here to give you an A through Z fucking step because there isn't one. Because out of everybody that's listening, maybe two, three people are really going to soak it in and, and have that spark that says, you know what? I'm going to go with that. I'm, I'm going to do this. And I've talked to so many of my friends and buddies, and you're right. Like, Man, I'm, I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about this, passionate about this. Well, are you doing it? Yeah. Have you started with anything? There were times I sit there for hours giving them advice. I'm like, dude, you should probably think about this and try this and try that. And I'm like, yeah, 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 you're right, right, right. And then the next day, like, one year at the other, right? And I'm just well, like, and that was that's what makes me, uh, you know, question that love or that that whatever you define as passion. Because I want, you know, what something that everybody can relate with. You found some, <laughs> you you ran across some new pussy. You're real excited about this new pussy. All right, mm -hmm. y'all know what it feels like. Most everybody, you know, women, men, whoever's listening right now. Uh, what it feels like to be like that in what you would maybe call the in love or that like that new feeling of a relationship or something. You will fucking drive five goddamn hours to spend an hour, you know, fucking this chick just to drive five hours back. And that was worth it to you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like you've, you all know, you know that feeling. That's the same thing. It's like when you fall in love with your passion, which turns into a business, it's like that where it's like, it's not even an option to not do the work because fuck, I can't even sleep without thinking about like being like close to this thing. You know what I mean? Like for those of you who don't know, he's saying all this because he just got he's going through it's that true. right now. I, I, it, yeah, it it's is. true. It's completely but it's, it's but it is relatable, true. right? Yeah. Um and, and uh, you know, I'm not saying you need to go as far as uh <laughs> you know, stalking the chick, but you know, <laughs> but you gotta be dedicated, right? I, yeah. I get what you're saying with that drive where it's just like it's just that you know that, that. Some, well, some of the stuff that you went through with with your wife. I mean, like, like there was a that was a whole. Oh yeah, like, I absolutely, mean, dude. Like, how much money did you probably spend on fucking international phone calls and shit, man? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. You know that was my. You know, I was dedicated to that. You know, we 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 were apart for a very long time, and uh, 
you know, I was driven by it. You know what I mean? I, I felt that this is what I need to dedicate my time to. So just like my business, you know, just what I do with ZF. And even to this day, I still don't consider it a business. To me, it's waking up and, and sharing the part of me. I still enjoy because here's the deal. The minute, the minute I stop having fun and enjoying my passion, I'm just going to shut the doors and move on. Right. Because the minute that happens, dude, then I'm not doing it right. You know what I mean? Then I'm faking it. Then I'm, then I'm, you know, it's not, if I wake up and I'm not thinking about ZF, man, then you know what? Um, then I'm doing something wrong here. So, right, right. you know, and again, it's not about money. It's not about any of that. Believe me. You know what I'm saying? It's not about any of that. To me, it's a mere satisfaction that I'm able to share what I truly enjoy and, and, and to give to people that enjoy it just as much. You know, I've been blessed to have this opportunity to even sit here and have a podcast, to sit here and have, you know, a lot of followers and, and to, you know, and for them that they purchase and, and we have over a 45% return customer rate, right? That's unheard of in a lot of brands. Uh, so people are loyal. So then it's like, I need to uphold myself through everything that I do, everything that I, you know, that I, uh, uh, that I bring out, I have to do that. And this is what makes success at mm -hmm. the end of the day. You know what I mean? Well, I think that, um, what's interesting to me. So you were mentioned, so I am, I am in a new relationship, uh, and it's, you know, it's been a weird time, but one thing that's interesting to me is that, um, you know, th there's this initial spark in this intoxication that leads you down a certain path. Okay. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. That's something that that's, that's how, when you ask, how do you start a business? It's got to start there. Okay. And if it's not there more than likely, like it, this is going to be a subpar situation for you. Like you're going to try to force it. So it's got to start there, but then you also got to be very careful not to neglect, uh, the, there's a difference between motivation and discipline. And motivation yeah. is like that initial feelings of like driving five hours to get some pussy. Discipline is like, I can't afford to drive five hours to get some pussy, so how do I, you know what I mean? So like, right. you know, there's this discipline that has to also step up because the fact is, is like, you know, G can't wake up every morning for the next, like every, every fucking day of his life and be as love drunk about ZF. There's gonna be days where ZF is not gonna be fucking fun and it's going to kick him in the balls and be like, God damn these, mother you know, but the, I think the discipline, the things that you put in to remind yourself like why we're here, right? what's exactly. all, like all of that shit yeah. has to fucking come to play. Yeah, exactly, man. Uh, that's, that's very true. You know what I mean? You gotta, you have to, you know, you have to stick with your guns, man. You have to stick. You came this far, you gotta keep going, right? Uh, and a lot of people are like, well, how far is enough? Like where, where's your goal? Uh, I don't have a goal. I live day by day. You know what I mean? Um, I, again, I wake up and I enjoy what I do. I truly do do that. I, 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 will, I won't lie that it got to the point where um, the, the fun side and creative side was being overshadowed by the business side, you know, the taxes and finances and reports and quarterly and all that bullshit, right, that you have to do as a business. And I was like, man, I got to the point where I was like, man, this is not fun anymore. Fuck this, right? Right. But then I sat back and I said, well, why is this happening? What do I need to do to fix that? And I did, yeah. and, I, and I took precautions, and I started bringing in, bringing in other people that could help me into staying focused, you know what I mean? So the other thing that I wanted to bring out with that said is networking, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, ZF has given me an opportunity not just to live and not to overcome my fears and, and, and to, you know, and to provide but it's also helped me meet people. It's also helped me, you know, to to come across, you know, all kinds of individuals from all walks of life. It's given me so many opportunities, you know. That's what that's what I see. It's not about money. It's not about anything else. But it's I look at it as ZF has given me so many opportunities. Like, you know, maybe I would have never went to uh, interview these World War II veterans. Maybe I would have never uh, done all kinds of shit that ZF has allowed me to do. Yeah. Um, you know, even standing here doing this with you, like, you know, maybe, through, you know, if it wasn't for ZF, I would have never moved here. If we never moved here, we never got to meet. And there's so many things, right? So it's it's kind of like that path. Well, I could tell you your life would be meaningless if I wasn't in it. I yeah, mean, I, I absolutely, man. I mean, that's, so um, can that's I, a given. Can I ask you, this is a tough one. Sh should like how does somebody like because i i personally don't think that everybody should be business owners I, th I think there's a i think that there is something that 
is almost like in people's DNA that really allows them to be able um, to do this. But yeah, how I do you separate those? I don't, I don't, I don't say that. I say, I, my opinion is that everybody has the opportunity to do whatever the hell they want. And again, it's all about balance and being happy, right? There are some people, again, they're completely fucking happy about working eight to five, the same job for the rest of their lives. Great. That's awesome. Right. There's some people that uh, are kind of stuck in the middle where it's like, you know, reality you know, they're like, fuck, I really want to do this, but I can't. I say there's always a way to find it, you know, despite the situations, you know. So I don't think it's fair for saying, yes, you're not, you never be a business owner, and yes, you will be. Or like you yeah. being a leader, and you're never going to be a leader. I think that, um, you know, experiences, and I think character plays a huge part in that. You know what I mean? I think if you're going to be a lazy ass, then you're not going to be a business owner. Well, and I think know? I think standards are standards. And like like going back to our last podcast, women in combat is like, look, I think that you can be, um, you can be on the fence and have you have the opportunity to be able to live up to the standard of like doing this. But I think that it's such a rare instance. Uh, and I think that that entrepreneurs are a more rare breed that I think there are certain but people we'll, that are geared into this world with like that kind of inherent. But look at it like this, man, willpower. you know, but look at it like this. I mean, what is an entrepreneur, right? It's the entrepreneur is we give that title based on the person's character, right? In my opinion, sure. guys who's driven, a guy who's busts his ass, who's disciplined, everything that we're talking about. Now, I think that all those can be. Thought. I think that all those can be, you know, anybody can change into whatever they they want to be. It's going to be easier for some and extremely harder for for others. But if you know, we're not talking about like, okay, you, I'm going to want to be a bodybuilder and I want to be this massive guy, but I know genetically I can't. Yeah, I think you it's know? funny though, man. It's like like I I want to agree, and I I think that's it's an open ended like conversation. But like, I think that when we talk about like genetics and some of these uncontrolled factors, I think sometimes there are like different mindsets and mental components to that, that I think, I don't know, I mean, it but just, what, it but, seems- But what about like undiscovered potential, right? Maybe somebody's sure. listening to this who's working a bullshit job and he thinks that he's well, never be something, he's, maybe he hears this and well, he's like, fuck, well, you know? I, you know, I think someone needs to say, dude, you're just fucked. Like, I hope you enjoy the job. No, nah, nah, I'm just man. kidding. That's fucked <laughs> that's, up, man. Fucked I'm up. just kidding, man. Listen, don't quit your don't quit Dunkin' Donuts yet. But listen, we're gonna talk about how to become an entrepreneur. All right, <laughs> we got this. All right. Well, you know, my point is that is I think everybody has the potential of doing it. In my opinion, again, you know, I think that anybody, if anybody would ever tell me you can do something, to me actually gives me the drive to actually fucking do that, if not more. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think that it's hard. I think sometimes though, I've seen people like try to fit a square peg in a round hole. I think everybody has the potential for success. I don't know, like, because you and I speak from a place of creative heart, and sure. I I think that that is not like okay. Uh, you're a business partner, Alex. Amazing, incredible guy. He's a little bit more of a structured, like, like. Yeah, yeah, that's know. that's different. That's different. Right. But he's still a business owner. You know he what is. I mean? So, like, so, so, like, so maybe that's a better way for me to to uh, to separate it. Is that you can definitely be a business owner, but you got to figure out where you fit yes, within that category. Uh, that that yes, that I agree. I think that of saying that you're never going to be a business, you are. I think that's wrong. But I think that because um, you couldn't tell Alex to be more like you. Like that's, that's right. in his DNA. You know what I mean? Like, right. Exactly. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm creative. Right. But maybe I'm not so good with numbers and he's maybe the other way around, but we compensate each other on that. So I think that, yes, you need a funny strong suit into, and, and you know, you just know that if you're like, I don't know, like uh, a guy who loves the outdoors, for example, like you love that shit and you're, you're physically strong and fit and, you know, then maybe that's something that you need to look into, right? So, yeah. so I think if you can find, if you can match your passion with your, you know, with your with your uh, uh, characteristics, then you know, great. I mean, if you look at ZF, like I'm passionate about history, I'm creative, you know, all that stuff. This kind of became this natural flow. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna run a, a restaurant. I'm sure I could. But am I going to be the best restaurant owner? I doubt it. I don't think I would be. Plus, I don't even give a flying fuck about restaurants, right? Uh, but, you know, like my dad. My dad, is, he's, been a, he's, he's been a chef for, shit, almost like 45 years, man. Like, can, he can teach me everything that he knows. But you know what I'm missing? He has the, the palate and the taste. And he just knows when something is done right. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I guess everybody's probably going to be thinking, well, how do I figure out what it is that I'm good at or excited about? You know what I mean? Because it's like, there are a lot of people that feel like they don't know what that thing is and they're looking for that thing. Um, and I think I, I don't, you know, I think that's a hard, hard one right there. It is. Man. It's like, it is. And sometimes it's not easy to answer right off the bat. I remember, you know, when I got out of the military and I was like, okay, well now what? Right. So I went to college and, um, try to figure out what my path was. And, and I've tried all kinds of different fields because I, I was like, I need to find a career. I need to find a job and all of that. But then I read there was always something clicking that I was like, man, there's something about this that I don't want. I tried to get into like science and technology and all the other shit, but I just, can you all imagine G in like a fraternity? Yeah, the Marine Corps. Like that was <laughs> fuck yeah. I was, I was <laughs> best uh, fraternity you can ever be in, man. Shit. All right. You know, all you right. get to slay people at wholesale. So, but <laughs> my point is, is that uh, there was always that spark that I was like, fuck, dude. Like, there's just something. You know what I mean? Like, I always when I come, I would come up with ideas, and I'm like, dude, I wish I had the opportunity. You know, I want to make. I just never had either the connections or the money or the time to actually make those ideas come to life. And then I, when I was put in the worst situation of my life, starting my own thing or going my own way was, you know, the, the only way of doing it. And again, it wasn't planned out. It wasn't, it just happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it just kind of grew from there. So, uh, I try to, you know, learn a lot of lessons. I try to take every opportunity and that's kind of what, you know, when I say start a business again, find your passion, right? Accept risks, accept failures and learn from them. You know, be motivated, be dedicated to what you want to do. Don't listen to the fucking hate haters and naysayers, man. Like, don't don't let people try to drag you down because they failed to do it themselves. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, for me, one piece of advice I could give anybody, and I'm not, I can't guarantee this is going to lead you to like where you want to be or what you're excited about. But I will tell you, if you can <laughs> just create the discipline to be the best the best motherfucker at whatever it is that you're yes, doing right now. Absolutely. Man. Like if you're working a job that you don't like, be the best motherfucker in that job. And I, I'm telling you right now, like you and I, we could go to a restaurant and we get one of these, like a waitress or a waiter that is just stellar on fire, like ridiculous. Sure. I'm thinking in my head, like what other opportunities this person, you know what I mean? Like, like you're the, you're the type of guy that would literally like, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, but, 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 but is that person saying the same thing about themselves? Right. Well, you know? and I, and I think that it shows though, like if you're that excited and like care that much to be the best fucking person there, that, that there is a, a passion inside of you. And it's just now how we do, we channel that in the right direction. And I think people can feel that and sense that. And I think it leads to other opportunities. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like, you know, just. And what I will, well, here's one thing that I wanted to say too, on top of it, right? You know, we, we talked about the mindset, the passions and all the other good shit. Okay. One thing that people need to realize in this day and age, okay, it has actually never been easier to start a business because you literally have oh, yeah. all the tools in your hand. Yeah. You know, you, you're looking at 60 years ago, or whatever, you know, you got to like have, you know, you got to have workers lined up, you got to have, you know, you don't, you didn't have social media, you didn't have influencers, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have Amazon and the commodities, like all the tools are there, right? Like that's not a, you can, you can go legal zoom, start a business in an hour, boom, done, right? Yeah. Before you couldn't do that. Uh, you could literally get on a phone, use Teespring if you want to sell shirts, for example. No money down, you start doing it, right? So there are all the tools are there. Some people may not know where to find them, but the tools are there. But again, those tools are not going to mean shit if you don't have the mindset and 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 then the drive, you know. Yeah. To get out there, man. Yeah, you know? I mean that. Yeah, that's that's no shit, guys. It's like there is no like you have every resource. On the planet, right? Absolutely. I, I, I can pull up, <laughs> I can pull up exactly like the percentage of what ethnicity, of what sex, of whatever is listening to our podcast right now. Sure. And that that helps me to identify a certain audience. Like, I mean, the the resources that we have is just ridiculous. Um, yeah. There, not, I mean, not it, to mention like all the uh, you talk about like this is kind of like a motivational talk to people that are interested in finding their passion. You know how many other fucking people are out there that like you can go and listen to i can pull oh, up youtube right now and listen yeah. to hours of tony robbins or whoever fuck to yes. like learn some shit you know and i'll tell you what dude sometimes like you know again you know sometimes you may get into situations 
right? Where you're kind of forced to learn that that trade. You know what I mean? And actually, you know, you're becoming an expert at it. You know what I mean? Like, I never knew never knew how to learn Photoshop. In fact, I actually went to college, took an extra class to do Photoshop. Didn't learn a fucking thing. But then when it came down to that, I was I put myself into a corner where I had to learn it. Guess what? Went on YouTube. Started looking it up, started practicing, and Nick Shino became proficient at it. Uh, it, all the only thing that I gave was my time. That's it. And like yeah. you said, you know, everybody has an unknown slotted amount of time. There's no guarantees. There is nothing, right? Nobody's guaranteed to live to be a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what do you? How are you going to spend your time? What are you going to do about it, right? Uh, yeah. My goal is to learn and to and 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 to uh, and to do as much as possible. So, you know, if I, I see a lot of people too, man, they see, man, man, look at that guy. He's driving that Ferrari or whatever, dude. Fuck him. He's probably like, you know, uh, fucking trust fund baby. You have no fucking idea what that guy's done. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. Maybe he was eating fucking Lunchables and shit on a bus mm-hmm. a year before. Yeah. Do you know what that person is? So I see a lot of people that are judgmental, mm-hmm. you know, and those are the first people that will fail, right? Right off the bat. Oh yeah. And that's, that, that goes into a whole conversation about like, like somehow going into this victimization, like, like, oh, this person had an opportunity that I didn't. And that's why I'm here. Bullshit. If you, yeah, if you start mm-hmm. like dwelling on like the, the other people or things that are the, that are the reason you are where you are, then that, that is just such a weak ass mindset. And, and yeah. it's going to, and, and, and what's funny is that you're holding your own fucking face down into the water. You know, it's not like somebody else. You, you think that the whole world is like the reason why you're where you are. Uh, in, instead of just taking ownership for the situation you're in, trying to be the best motherfucker in the situation you're in, tr- and that all of a sudden will, will start to free you to allow you to do greater things, you know? And I'm not pretending like everybody's going to be a millionaire. That's not, not everybody's going to drive a Ferrari, and that's fine. But man, just let go of the bullshit excuses and just like be the best version of whatever spot you're Absolutely, in right now. Man. Stick and, to your principles, yeah. stick to your morals, man. Stick to what makes you happy at the end of the day. That's that. That's like, and never steer away from the goal of, you know, having a fulfilled life. And, and, and uh, you know, it's great to provide for your family. It's great to do all of that. Don't get me wrong. Dude. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to look back and say, you know what? I went through this, to the, through this treacherous road and I'm looking back. I'm like, look how far I've came, man. Look what I built. Look what I've mm-hmm. done, you know. Uh, and that's, that's what's super important, man, you know, and this goes out to a lot of the veterans because I know, we know for a fact that a lot of guys get out and have no fucking clue because, you know, you get thrown into the mix of civilian life. You're like, well, now what? Right. So that's why we start seeing a lot of these veteran, uh, businesses pop up, which is great. Awesome. Like, like, uh, fuck yes. Right. But, and everybody's got their story. Everybody's got, you know, mm-hmm. veterans got a, you know, a lot of burns on their shoulders. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they, um, they're trying to get accustomed to a whole new world and, you know, I've done, I was building ZF during a time where I was like, you know, to the point where I was calling hotlines just to fucking make sure that my wife wasn't finding my body somewhere the next morning. You know what I mean? And, and I, so I look back at all of that, you know, I look back at the struggles. I look back at the dark times. And despite that, um, you know, my motivation and my drive didn't, didn't fall. You know what I mean? Uh, so if you're going through hard shit, if you're like, you think you cannot make it, you need to stop doing that shit, man. You know what I mean? You need to really, really get a focus on your life and say, is this where I'm at right now? Is this where I, where I should be or where I want to be? If the answer is no, and you want to start your own shit, go for it. Mm -hmm. Bottom fucking line, man. Bottom line. There is no excuse for you to say not that you cannot do it. I mean, my mom, shit, man, same thing. She started her own little business and she was going to college at like 55, dude, just to get her fucking degree and whatever the hell she was doing and working a full-time job, right? Yeah. So she could have easily said, well, I'm, I'm 50 plus and then fuck it. But you know what? She stuck to her fucking passion or her dreams. And, you know, despite it all, fucking, you know, she did her shit, man. So it's awesome. all about how bad you want it. And all the while she was juggling a side relationship with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, that's a lot of shit going on. You got some bad taste, brother. (laughs) Shit. So, Mm. uh, I I think, I don't know if you, I'm I'm sure you will agree with me on this, but uh, one thing I did want to mention is that for anybody listening, look, if, uh, or, you know, starting your own thing or, or, you know, being independent as an entrepreneur or whatever is, is not necessarily for everybody and it doesn't have to be. I think sometimes 
with all these motivational fucking speakers and shit like that out there, they try to like convince everybody that you need to be an entrepreneur. And I think that there's nothing wrong with being finding satisfaction in your day to day job and sure, finding yeah. peace and happiness in what you're like. If if you're going to work at Dell and you you know clocking in and out and like you're fulfilled, like fuck yeah, right the fuck on. Like there's no re like you, you know or just doing something like as an example like for you. You can do photography because you enjoy taking pictures, mm -hmm. and then you can do photography because you want to make money doing photography. You can also have both of those. I can have a passion for photography, and then I can figure out how to monetize that. But you don't really have to, right? Like, like you, sure. you know, if you want to work a regular job because that gives you some level of peace, and you want to take pictures, you know, on the weekends and shit because you like yeah. that. Fuck yeah, dude! Like, you yeah, know, that's how ZF got started, dude. In, in in a way that I was, I still had a full time job because I was like, well, I need that to pay my bills, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll be up to three in the morning fucking packing, you know, and, and my wife was there helping me out and shit like that. So, uh, so yeah, it was kind of like working, you know what I mean? Like I, I took the time to divulge into, into what I was interested in, what I was passionate about, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that's what I encourage everybody to do. Um, you know, don't, don't set yourself limits, man. Cause limits are honestly just bullshit. Mm. So yeah. Whether you make it into a business and make money from it, or you just fucking like spend time doing it, man, yeah. like just fucking Fuck do yeah, more. Of and, it. Then, and then just enjoy the ride, man. You know what I mean? But be prepared to fail, be prepared to take risks, be prepared to, to, you know, to, to fall down, be prepared to, you know, go back to square fucking negative three every time. Uh, just learn from it. But if you want to start something, don't think of it again, don't start your business. Think about starting a whole new chapter in your life. Think about it like that. You know what I mean? And focus on what you love. So, I, yeah, I, I think you well said, man. I don't know yeah. what else to contribute to that, man. Well, <laughs> That's, uh, but it, other than that, so. Yeah. You know, if you guys got any questions on it or any comments or whatever, if there's something you guys enjoy listening to, mm -hmm. uh, drop it down, man. Let us know how it goes and, uh, you know, let us know, you know, share your, share your, uh, yeah, um, you know, your experiences with it or your feet, you know, we want to hear yeah, your, your feedback about it. Exactly. You know? Like if you're hung up somewhere along the way, like within these and like, you know, you feel like you need more clarity, like, yeah, just hit us up. Let us know. Like, cause I'm, I'm curious. And I, I know that there's a struggle of people. They, there's a, there's a group of people out there that are like, you know, yeah, that's great. That's great. But I just can't figure out what I want to do. Like I hear that all the time. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. And, and I get it. I get that that's, yeah. you know, somewhere that people get stuck. So, but eventually you'll find it, man. You know, it took me what, almost 10 years to realize what the fuck I wanted to do and, uh, and running my own shit and, 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 you know, explore my creativity. Eventually that's, that's what happened. You know what I mean? And I, again, I took all kinds of different paths in life and it kind of led me to this. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's my two cents on it. But, uh, other than that, we're probably going to cut it short today. Cause, um, <clears throat> I got wife shit that I got to deal with. Uh, she's going to have to tell me about, you know, the, uh, sad relationship she has with you. So I need to, dude, yeah. I need to confront her. I'm like that. strangely exhausted. Like, I feel like I actually need a nap and I don't, I don't nap, dude. Like this would be my second nap in a week. That's because, dude, the, the minute problem. you got a cat, bro, that's probably what happened. You just got lazy. It really is. Like, I got this cat. Anyway, this is a whole nother story. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. We right, appreciate guys. it. Uh, listen, uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we have these every single week. And then also, if you're one of these that really enjoys the military history and things like that, we're we working are, on that. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. We're, we're working on that. It's coming. Stay tuned. And we'll stay see you guys. zero. <laughs> Later, Later guys. you go.